All right. Welcome, everyone, to Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling, and I believe for the first time, uh, even though I've been on his show, I have got a special guest, Mr. Crash, Mr. Trevor Crash Knight from the Crash Course Metal Show. How are you doing, sir? Good, brother. Thank you for having me on. And this uh, this has been uh, a meeting that we've been trying to do for a little while now. Finally, we can do it here. And I'm certainly happy to be here, man. Yeah, we get a, we get something cool to talk about, and I would I highly recommend everyone check out Trevor's channel, Crash Course Metal Show, in true rock and roll fashion. Crash Course spelled with K's. Uh, you can find <laughs> him on YouTube. He's uh, he posts tons of cool videos. As a matter of fact, um, a little over a week ago, he posted a video talking about the very album we're going to be talking about today. Now I went out of my way not to watch it just yet because I want to be surprised. So yeah, so. Um, Crash is one of those guys that gives me hope for the future because he's a younger guy and he's into the classic, classic stuff, particularly uh, late 80s, mid to late 80s, early 90s, hard rock and metal. And I'm all about that. Uh, I've been on, uh, we talked about Baton Rouge. We talked about, we talked about Blue Murder. We talked about Tattoo Rodeo. Yeah. We, yep. You Blue know, Murder not as well. Winger, not, you know, sometimes not the obvious bands, but um, we're going to talk about a band now that's back with their first. A uh, new studio album in eleven years, and that band is Dawkin. Back with their new album, Heaven Comes Down, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, Dawkin, not a band that um, the mainstream, you know, they never had a really, really huge hit. So I, I don't think a lot of mainstream people remember Dawkin now, but they were a big band. They had three platinum albums, a gold record for the live album. And, you know, a lot of people went out and bought, you know, Tooth and Nail, Under Lock and Key, Back for the Attack. Of course, Don right. Dawkin on lead vocals. Um, completely different lineup now. And it's kind of cool. Uh, it's a lineup he's had for a few years now. And, and now there's an actual documented studio album. The last Dawkin, the last new Dawkin album came out in 2012. And it was this one, Broken Bones, which I thought was a pretty decent album. But... In the years since then, uh, you know, there's been the reunion of the classic lineup. They did Return of the Beast. And um, I don't know. I, I think I speak for most fans when I say pretty obvious that Don Dawkins voice is not what it used to be. Um, right. Yeah, I, I was particularly, you know, did you listen to that that Return of the Beast, the live album? I mean, I, I have not, but I have seen him live the last year. Okay. And uh, it's certainly obvious, like you said, uh, that Don does not have his voice anymore from 20, 30 years ago. But, I mean, it was still a great show still. He still had fun doing it, and uh, we had a great time. But to your point there real quick uh, about Doc and being pretty big in the 80s, but they didn't really have that single or that real big like welcome to the jungle type deal yeah uh i, I guess maybe dream warriors might have been the closest probably yeah thing. the dream warriors theme from the third nightmare in elm street movie that right. got them a lot of attention i mean because of the video and yeah uh but it, you know they, yeah they didn't have a big you know pop crossover hit you know they didn't have a right. living on a prayer or they didn't yes. have and then, or something like that right soon after dream warriors they broke up so yeah, they that kind just, of yeah that kind of goes on to the, the verge point. Of breaking through and they yes, broke up and that yeah. that kind of goes to my point of if they would have had one more album i think after back for the attack they would have been a very household name like guns and roses are or Molly I think so. are today. yeah i think so i mean you know because they had what it took that i always thought that Dawkin kind of fell into sort of this middle ground where they were a little bit too heavy for fans to say bon jovi and def leppard right but they weren't heavy enough for fans of either Maiden or Priest or the thrash stuff. You know, I mean, famously, you know, Don Dawkin will say he wanted to break up after playing the Monsters of Rock shows in 1988 and coming on before uh, or coming on after Metallica, who were right, just right. hitting hard with Head Justice for All. I think it might have been better if Dawkin had come on before them so they didn't have to follow. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, they a lot of people say, you know, they were you know, selling millions of albums and they were just on that verge of breaking through and one more album might have done it. As a matter of fact, I, I'm a big fan of Up From The Ashes, which okay. I've always considered a Don, I've always considered a Dawkin album. 
That's a Doc and Elbow. Yeah. It's stupid yeah. that the man couldn't use his last name. But uh, <laughs> yeah. he's fixed that. He went to court and he got that fixed. That's, I think, one of the advantages of having a guitar player that's also your lawyer. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, if Up From the Ashes had come out in 89 and it had been, you know, Lynch and, and Pilsen and, and Mick Brown, that might have done it. That might have spun off a couple hit singles. But right. there's just more marketability in a band than there is in one guy, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, and Dawkin came back, of course, they reunited. Um, they did uh, two albums. They did Dysfunctional, which I really liked. Uh, so much so that I argued for it as my favorite Dawkins album on the Contrarians. Then they Ooh, followed up okay. with one of the worst albums in my collection, which would be <laughs> Shadow Life. I hate that album. To me, that yeah. album is right up there with Queen's Rikes dedicated to chaos. Is just a garbage waste of a CD jewel case. Yes. So then Lynch left, and they got Red Beats, and they did Erase the Slate, which I thought was a decent album, and that's actually. The only time I ever saw Dawkins, I saw Dawkins with, uh, it was on a bill with Poison Headlining, Cinderella, Dawkins, and then Slaughter opened it. That was a great show. Yeah, so that, I in, uh, that was in the year 2000. And that was good. Um, you know, Don sounded pretty good then. But anyway, where I'm going with all this is that I, I don't think, I really was surprised to find out that Dawkins were announcing a new album after all this time. I mean, you know, they were out there touring. But yeah, the end result is is heaven comes down. You know, the classic Dawkins logo is there. This is um, pretty much self-produced. It's, you know, produced by Bill Palmer and Don Dawkins, actually mixed by Kevin Shirley, which I'm, I'll be honest with you, that's kind of a thing that I dwell on. I'm kind of surprised by that because the drums <laughs> still sound pretty good. I don't think Kevin Shirley gets a great drum sound. I've never right. been, I've never understood Band's fascination with that guy. Yeah, I, I, I think like, makes, like you said, I, I think I think he makes crappy sounding albums. Yeah, which is like, my like, opinion. Yeah, like you said, like I don't really take notice of it on this album. Like everything, like the mix seems okay to me. Like no, no, no one's really like too high or too low. Yeah, uh, I'm I pretty. Guess, okay, I'm okay with the production mix and stuff. I guess you know he, he mixed it. He didn't produce it. He didn't engineer it. So he's using what's already there. Right. Because to me, his albums always sounded like he had the drummer turn the snare off. <laughs> you listen to the Aerosmith Nine Lives or, or or Dream Theater Falling into Infinity or for that matter any of the Iron Maiden albums the drums just sound dead to me that's just my maybe it's my weird ears I don't know <laughs> so um, I gotta say and and um, you know from our chat like I said I didn't watch your review video yet I think we're kind of in agreement that this album is surprisingly good um, yeah I, I had very low expectations um, especially seeing some of the clips of Don live, but as far as capturing it in the studio, singing material that we're not used to hearing in a different way, that's right. one of the things that really bothered me about listening to that Return of the Beast live album is that in most cases, Don was full on singing the songs a full octave lower yes. than they were recorded in, which means he was singing in the right key, but like I said, an octave lower, like just a step away from talking. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, That's a good way to put it. This is this is new material, and it was written with his advancing years and voice in mind. And mm -hmm. I think that they've come up with a pretty good collection of songs. And I think maybe probably the easiest things to go through them track by track. Um, so the first thing I, I, I do want to go over the the lineup. It's um, John Levin on guitar. He's been with him for years now. Like I said, he's also the lawyer. <laughs> um, Chris McCarble on bass and. Uh, bj zampa on drums so yeah um the last time around broken bones he still had mick brown but mick has since retired so right um so yeah this lineup has now a, a studio document and i think it's a pretty good one the album is on silver lining music which is um i was kind of surprised i don't know about you but i kind of figured it would be on frontiers yeah, you would think because Frontiers is getting like a lot of stuff. They even did the uh, new Lynch Mob album mm. as well here. So yeah, and they did Broken Bones. They did the Beast. They did the the Return of the Beast. But um, Silver Lining Music is the company that put out the last thing I bought from Dawkin, which was the Lost Songs, okay. which is what Don put out. It was tracks from like seventy eight to eighty one. Um, anyone who's ever bought that back in the streets CD. Mm -hmm. It's all the songs that are on there, plus I think five more. Okay. So it's like early, free, breaking the chains docket. But anyway, so 
you know, if they put this out, I got to say, I've seen a lot of people posting this album. So, you know, it might be selling pretty good. Um, first track, which was the first single and video anyone saw a few months ago called Fugitive. I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Really I'm, like I'm with you. The The chorus is kind of catchy. Uh, you can tell this is probably like Don pushing the limit of his voice in this yeah. song compared to a lot of the other ones here. And yeah. you're like, OK, yeah, let's not go any further than this. But yeah. it, uh, it works, though. It, I, I'm all right with it. Yeah. I like the, the I don't even know if you call it a riff, but I like the little guitar melody that starts it off. It's yeah. it's, it's heavy. Um, Gypsy. And and OK, so before we get too farther, I do want to do want to mention this is the third time in Dawkins career that they've titled an album more or yeah. less uh, from an earlier song. So <laughs> yeah. obviously in 2007, they had Lightning Strikes Again which yep. originally appeared on Under Lock and Key. Yeah, pretty good album. Uh, and even in um, 2002, they had Long Way Home, which is a song from Dysfunctional. Right. But that's, right. And, and they're the only band I know of that's done that, but there's nothing wrong with it. If you didn't have a title song for the album, I guess you've still got a good title, write a song <laughs> around it. But anyway, what made me think of that? The second track, Gypsy, I was like, don't they have a song called Gypsy? But I was saying Cry of the Gypsy. Yes. From Back for the Attack. Um, Good song. I, you know, I will say... I, you know, I don't know how you feel about this. I think that the album is kind of front loaded with its best songs. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe. I I don't know. I that's a, I think it that's starts to a, dip and then it comes back. But that's, um, that's a pretty good question because I do like the ending of the album here. Uh, I think yeah, it's pretty strong. But but you might have a point though. I, there is some like middle ground here that uh kind of gets lost. You know, it's you just a couple of songs lost. for me right. that, that dip a little bit. But overall, I, I I hate to say it that this way, but it's surprisingly decent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and 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 that's not a put down, and that's not being you know smart or snarky. It's if you like Dawkin, you'll probably like this album. You know, Don yes. does use his voice very well in these songs i really like the third track is it me or you me too um, great riff yeah. yeah really like that and john levin i mean john levin don's always well once you've had george lynch in your band and i know he wasn't their original guitar player but you've really got to keep that level up you can't just get someone that can just play a little bit you right. know that's why you've got to get rev beach or john yeah. norum you've got to have guys that so john levin is great now, correct me if i'm wrong John Levin was in Warlock, right? I think so. That where he came from? I think so, yeah. So, yeah. He's been with him for years. Uh, the next track, Just Like a Rose, I kind of like that one. To me, that's more of the... Um, that's more of the melodic docking of, say, In My Dreams or um, maybe Burning Like a Flame. I like right. that one. You know? Yeah, I, it, I mean, yeah to me, it's just... A, it, it's okay. It gets a little repetitive to me. Like coming, like especially coming off, is it me or you? I'm like, yeah. okay, this song, like, is it me or you? It might be my favorite song off the album. You know, I think so too. I think, I think we're, yeah, I really like that one. I, yeah. I do too. I think they hit a home run with this, and even I think it even blows the two singles, uh, that came before the track number one and two away as well. Been, yeah, I, I think it should have been a, a video, and right, I yeah. don't know what difference that makes these days, but uh, yeah, then, exactly. Um, I guess this would probably be the last song on side one because it's just got ten tracks. I'll never give up. That's mm -hmm. like a heavier ballad. Yeah, which I, yeah. I kind of like 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 that one too. I do too. Um, uh, it's solid stuff. I mean, like you said, the first half is pretty good. Other than kind of like I said, with a little bit of the repetitive, uh, you know, just like a rose. But I mean, it's solid, especially like like you said a couple minutes ago. Especially if like you've known of Doc in at least like the past five ten years. And you know, like the decline here, and like our expectations weren't very large to begin with with this album, right. and we were just really interested and curious on what Docking could do or Don could do in the studio to like cover this up. And I, like you said, it's very way past my expectations. Yeah, yeah, and and you know the other thing is like okay, he's using his voice well in the studio, but they're also coming up with good songs and that's yes. that's a really key thing here. I think all most of the songs in here are are Dawkin and Levin co-writes, although there are at least a couple on here that Don wrote himself. Mm -hmm. Um next track Saving Grace, really like this one. This is a heavy sort of um I don't want to say it's like a cashmere type of song, but it does have that sort of uh 
you know, Eastern, like Dio ish or, or like Blue Murder or mm -hmm. White Snake Judgment Day. It's got that kind of feel to it. And honestly, it's pretty hard to go wrong with a song like that when you've set it up like that. But I think it's a catchy song. I get the chorus in my head. I really like that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Like that mid tempo type deal. Uh, it, I think it has a good solo too. Uh, yeah. I specifically oh, yeah. great, wrote that great down. Great guitar work on here. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people drifted to Dawkins because of George Lynch. Yes. You know, almost sadly, almost more so than any of the songs or anything. You got to hear this guy play. I think right. they had great songs, too. But but yeah, Lynch was a cut above. So if you're into that style, uh, I will say that the about the, the the only thing I noticed that on some of the songs that Levin can do all the shredding stuff. He can do that Lynch Red Beach type of stuff. He mm -hmm. also throws in a little bit of a bluesy feel sometimes, yeah. which I like that. And it seems to just come at the right times. I agree. And to to that point like i th i do feel like there's traces of back for the attack type guitar work in here not not trying to say levin is acting like george lynch at all or anything like that but there are like little traces where i'm like that kind of reminds me of back for the attack or you know something you know some kind of they uh, kind of they kind of tapped there. into that that vintage dock and sound mm -hmm. without you know Ripping off to copy songs. It. Yeah, yeah. Next song, not a Nazi cover, Over the Mountain. Um, <laughs> this uh, this is the first one that I like, but I'm not as crazy about. But it's it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. It's pretty good for what it is. That yeah. that's kind of the best way that I can explain this song. Uh, but you know, it's it's solid. Like you said, it's still listenable. It's not one where you're like, oh God, I can't turn this off, or I can't. Yeah, listen to it's anymore. not. There's nothing I skip on here. I listen to the whole. whole pretty thing. much, yeah. I'm pretty much in agreement. Maybe like one or two tracks I don't need to like transfer over to the iPod, but like you can let this whole album play and be satisfied. Yeah. Uh, next one I remember. Now this one, um, it's a ballad, and it, it's okay, but but here's the only thing that I get stuck on with this it's there are parts of it that have the same chord progression as alone again. That's a mistake. You can't yeah. compete with that. Not just in doc and that to me alone again is one of the greatest hard rock power ballads of the eighties. Mm -hmm. And so when you have an, a song that, that is kind of following the same path, it's never going to measure up to the original. I, no, I think I, they could have reworked yeah, it into yeah. a, kind of its own thing i'm not saying it's i'm not saying it's to the point where you can sing alone again over the whole thing it's just <laughs> it reminds me of it and it makes me want to listen to that song and not the one i'm currently listening to so even though i, I think it's okay it's probably my least favorite one on the album really okay because i was gonna say this is probably my favorite of the ballads on here uh but i can understand what you're saying like with a, comparing it to somewhat like alone again and I get that, uh, but like I like the solo. The chorus is kind of catchy as well. Oh yeah, it, uh, it's well written. It's it, you know it, it it just about stands on its own. But it's got that. And I yeah, and I can see you know it's got that. I, I can see where you're coming from with that, and I I, I get that a hundred percent. But I think for me anyway, it works. You know. Yeah. So uh, next up, Lost in You. This is one that I don't mind, but. When I look through the titles now, and I've listened to this CD surprising quite a few times, I keep coming back to it. This is one I can never remember. I don't know what that speaks to. Because I don't think it's, when I'm hearing it, I don't think it's a bad song. I just, it doesn't stick for some reason. Now, I can agree with that, because this is probably one of those that I would leave off the uh, iPod. But, but you know, it's still your mid-tempo, decent song. I, I did uh, kind of make a point to write down that, like the guitar work throughout it is pretty good now granted oh, yeah. you can say that with most of the songs here yeah. but uh like i didn't write that down for like every track though either so like there like if you want to listen to a song there's more guitar work uh oriented stuff than say some of the other songs yeah um and i you know the last song santa fe mm -hmm. is really different for docking it's it an is. acoustic song I kind of like it. I kind of like the way that this wraps up the album. And I'm trying to think if there's anything like this. I'm sure there is, but I can't think of anything like this on previous docket albums. I'll tell you what it reminds me of is um, the first XYZ album. 
because it ends on the song After the Rain, which is an acoustic yes. song. Great song. Which, and that album was produced by Don Dawkins. It was. I'm it not was. saying it sounds anything like it. I'm just saying it doesn't quite sound like Dawkins to me, but I like it. It's, I like it because it's different. It's kind of like, thanks for listening to the album. We're going to send you home now. Yep. Um, yeah, I like it. I, you know, and, and to me, it kind of brings me back into the album and it makes me want to listen to it again. So, you know, 100%. You know, when the year starts, I think I, I go through this every year when I think of, you know, the bands that I like. Um, I think, you know, what could we hear this year? What, you know, it would be nice, especially when you think about a band that hasn't put out an album in a while, it would be nice right. to hear another album from dot, dot, dot. Dawkin would not have been one of those bands. I truly figured that they were done as a recording band. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's, maybe that was for the best. Yeah. But this is the case. I do not mind being wrong. Because I think that, that Don and the band have put together a really good album it's well produced mm -hmm. uh i think the songs I, I i really think the songs are well sequenced you know he doesn't have like two mid-tempo songs in a row two ballads in a row right. there's a good mix of rockers uh, there's actually some surprisingly heavy stuff on here too mm -hmm. um you know you don't get like the same tempos and stuff it's very different sounding than broken bones i mean i know there's 11 years but you know i've heard it said that you know in the 2000s where production productions have kind of leveled out mm -hmm. where you could take like the last four albums by a band and and just you could just shuffle the songs around right right yeah yeah it doesn't make them good or bad it's just but you know you listen to the albums from the 70s and the 80s and because production changed so fast mm -hmm. there's no mistaking one album from the one that came after it because it just sonically so different right i so, so yeah i'm i'm lockstep pretty much with you like i love santa fe as well i like that or it's like an oriental spanish sound to it uh Man, yeah it's got that space it's got the little you got the little cat i don't know cast of so whatever little wood yeah, block things you know just it's just like the it's a dimension too. you're not used to hearing right from a Dokken album and right. uh 100 percent. and, and it's what, a great you know, it's a great song to close on and possibly even close your career on as well because I, if i remember seeing correctly i think don said this might just be the last album that he does as Dokken anyway yeah, and uh, and this is a solid swan song album to end on. Like, yeah. I honestly would take this over a lot of the stuff over the past twenty years. Uh, I would like, too. I would take. I take that over hell to pay, or yeah. uh, you know, um, and even I would take just about anything over shadow light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's good. It's good. It's solid. And and you also have to. Um, Look, like it is 2023. Don's 70 years old. Yes. And still he's capable of putting out a decent and and I like it when these these you know the guys in the older bands prove that hey, I've still I, I've still got things to say here. And I yes. think another thing, just to go back to Santa Fe for a second, the fact that you know Don's vocals are pretty naked in the arrangement. Yes. And he sounds yes. good. Like he's singing well in that range. He's not he knows. He's not going to be able to push the air. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no there's no lightning strikes again. There's no kiss of death. Those days are gone. Right. But he's yeah. using his voice well. He's still got that. You know, he's one of those singers that, you know, his gift is that as soon as he sings a line, doesn't matter what key it's in, you know, it's Don Dawkins. Yeah. He's still got that tone. You just still, know it's him when he sings. Still a professional singer. That's yes. the best yes. way to. I think I can say this to somebody like, yes, it's not Don's normal voice that we're all used to and love, but it's still a professional vocalist belting out to singing these songs. So yeah. with that being said, I mean, I'm way past my expectations with this. Like this yeah. is a, like, I will visit this when I listen to Dokken. You know, and I yeah. don't say that with, you know, lightning strikes. Now there are some good songs on this album, but to me, I, something's missing on that and like you said with uh broken uh broken bones or right yeah, yeah. and then yeah it, it's it's i like this i don't know if it's just because it's new and it's shiny like and just i'm really impressed with right. it um, maybe in six 12 months it might kind of fall in the wayside of this then you know but because that's kind of how what happened with that with me but I, I enjoy it a lot and i'm not saying it's a masterpiece by any means or nope. yeah, no no it's like you know, this won't 
this won't make you reconsider, you know, if your favorite album is Tooth and Nail or, or Under Lock and Key, <laughs> this isn't going to change that, but it's just, yeah. it's really, it's a solid album. And I think Don's, a, you know, enough of a professional, like you said, and he, you know, he's also produced bands. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'd put it out if he didn't think, if he thought he was just, no, this is bad. I'm not putting this out. So I agree. Kudos to, you know, everybody involved for, for coming up with a great album. And, um, you know, hey, I, I'm at a point now where I don't see as many concerts as I used to. Mm -hmm. So put put the CDs out, put the albums out. Let's yeah. let's, you know, put them out now before they put up posthumously, you know, before yeah. people start rooting through what's left over. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. Get this, get the new music out there for, you know, and we'll, and we'll give it a shot. Yeah? So yeah, if you're a Dawkins fan, if you've been on the fence about it, I think it's worth picking up. I really do. Doc and heaven comes down silver lining music. Uh, get it wherever you get your music and uh, crash. I want to thank you for sitting in and of I'm going to give you the floor here, my friend on your channel. Tell me about your channel, how long you've been doing it and, and um, you know, and what's coming up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you again for having me, Tim. Uh, this is great. Uh, well, I I'm honored to come back on at any time and talk about the great eighties and early nineties. That's my favorite era of all time. And, uh, but yeah, uh, with crash course metal show, uh, we do artist interviews. We do album react album reviews, reaction videos as well. And, uh, I bring in different guests, even musicians come on and just chat with us, uh, just about music and, like today, we're doing an interview with uh, Paul Lydell from Dirty Looks. So we we bring some different stuff. Bring in, and Tim knows all about this because when he comes on my channel, we talk about the bands, the 80s bands that don't get much love or much attention. And that is what I like to really emphasize on my channel is the underground new music as well, as long as with the old vintage stuff too. So it, we bring a lot of different stuff here at the Crash Course Metal Show, and I want to thank Tim for having me on. Awesome. Yeah, check it out. I mean, yeah, there are bands that I can barely remember, and I lived through this era. And uh, Crash not only talks about them, sometimes he'll have members on Wild Side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. like I said, Tattoo Rodeo. Who? Did, where are you going to find a video? Where are you going to find a video to a guy talking about Tattoo Rodeo on Crash's right. channel? <laughs> so I'll post a link. Uh, below to crash the channel make sure and subscribe if you haven't hit subscribe on tim's vinyl confessions please do so if you want a little merch go to t public if you want my unspooled book that uh, link will be below as well and uh yeah get the new docket go listen to some docket and yes, uh, thanks everyone for watching this edition of tim's vinyl confessions we'll see you later